Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. She came all the way to Hawaii to see us, and this is D Dana Mahana, and she is a wonderful person that has great information about burnout, and she just recently authored a new book that she's going to talk to us about, about burnout, and she's going to go over some great tools and techniques. So I'd like to give the stage to her and let Dana tell you a little about herself, what she does, and listen to her advice because she has a lot of great info to share. Thank you so much, Stacey. Aloha from the islands of Hawaii. I'm on the Aloha. island of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the small garden island, allegedly 5 million years old. So if you want to slow your roll and get back to the basics and what really makes life worth living, I really recommend time on a Hawaiian island, even if you don't make the full migration to live here. That is not for <laughs> everyone. So thank you for having me on your show. Oh, you're very welcome. I'd so, love to hear about yeah. this. So let me, let me tell us all about, you know, what you do and, and about burnout. This is great. Yeah. So when I hear my own bio, it sounds like it's overwhelming in itself. So I'll try to be really clear. So I am an author and a podcaster and an executive leadership team performance coach and most importantly, in the year of 2024, can't believe that's the year we're in, I am working with women in women's online groups and courses to help them what we call bloom. And the book that just came out, my second book is called B is for Burnout, Not Bitch. It's this hot Barbie pink. Every time I'm on a show, I say, I came up with this color scheme before that movie came out. Although thanks, <laughs> Margot, Robbie, and Greta. So B is for Burnout Not Bitch is about helping women go from overdrive to thrive, A to Z. And the way I wrote the book is the way I teach my classes, which is depending on where you're at, what's going on for you, whether it's your career, your family, your friends, community, your own well-being in the what I call five facets of life that we all have. Right. Where are you? Where do you want to be? What are the trade-offs? What's in your way? What's exciting? What brings you joy? What helps you to be productive? All these lessons, tools are in this book, A through Z, so that if you're having a really hard day, let's say with S is for self-love, you go to that chapter. It's very short. It's very clear. My clients of the last eight years, hundreds of people will tell me, it sounds like you're coaching in this book. So that was the idea is that it's yeah. an affordable, accessible coaching tool that mostly in the past, only executives could afford with right. the type of coaching programs that executive coaches provide. Right. You know, I think it's so important that people understand how dangerous burnout really is. You know, we live in a society, and it all really depends where you live, because like when I when I do nationwide speaking and I hit different states, there are some states that are so nice and laid back, and I'm like, wow. You know, then you come to certain city areas and it's rush, rush, go, go. So it really depends like where you live. Like I live around the New York area, so over here it's like nonstop, you know, everyone is on the go completely. A same thing in California. So, you know, it all depends where in the world you live. But you know what? A lot of times it depends on the position too of where where you work, you know, what's your position or even a mom. You know, a lot of times as mothers, we forget about that, but mothers are the rock of the family and they have a lot on their shoulders and they get burnt out very easily too. And you, that could be any state, to be honest with you. So even though you might not live in a rush, rush state where I think people are constantly moving fast, if you're a mom or you're taking care of people or you're a caregiver or depending on the role, you could easily burn yourself out because sometimes I think that humans, we put others before we put ourselves. And when the workforce, I think what we do, unfortunately, is that we have so much responsibilities that, and we we just focus on what we have to do, but we, then we neglect ourselves. And how can we do a good job at anything if we're not focusing on ourselves first? Yeah, uh, we talk about this all the time in my groups, especially with women and with the men that are the primary caregivers for their families. And I'm glad you brought up primary caregivers. We learned so much about first responders and the front line during the time of COVID. And it's yeah. not that long ago and we hardly talk about it anymore. And now- Companies are saying return to work or return to office RTO policies. And it's wild to me because 
you know, being a mom or a caregiver is a state of mind. So it yeah. doesn't matter what state or country you live in. It's a state of mind. And in order to do the best for others, we have to put ourselves first. And I call that me before we. So sometimes it's teaching a five minute micro joy habit. Yeah. Five minutes a day. Take five. It's very Mel Robbins like and good for her. That's exactly right. Five, four, three, two, one. So five minutes a day. And you really do something for yourself. You breathe the air. You look at a picture of your family that brings you joy. You pet your dog. Something meditatively for five minutes a day that you give to yourself if you're the caregiver, the nurturer, the provider first. Right. Yeah. I think that's so important. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've talked to a lot of moms, especially, and, you know, they feel guilt or shame <laughs> if they put the others before if they put themselves before others but then how can you really take care of the people you love if you're not taking care of yourself first and I think that's such a great point you know all you need is five minutes of good quality time to clear your mind to really put things in projective you know and 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 have a a clear mind of what's important and what you really need to do for yourself and that can make all the difference even when they suggest meditation they say maybe 15 minutes of meditation in the morning and that could be like a, a total turnaround a total 360 it really doesn't take much it just matters structure in your life more productively i think what do you yeah. feel I agree with you, Stacy. It's funny because I, I, we, I said this to you in the pre-show. I was just with a group of women in San Francisco Bay Area. So I had just come three years ago to the islands from the Silicon Valley. I spent 22 years there, which talk about hype and constant sprints inside of marathons and everybody's climbing. I mean, it was really exhausting, exhilarating at times and exhausting at others. Yeah. And when I told women, me before we, they, they looked at me sort of funny and a lot of them asked me at the break or I was signing books for them and they were joking, but not joking. You know what that's like? Cause you're yeah. out in the world. Is that legal? Am I allowed to do that? Like, how do I do it? Like literally, how do yeah. I take that five? And it is important that you do something for yourself for a very short period of time before you start all the like massive giving to others, because once you're drained, once you're burned out, once you're in that vicious cycle, it's very hard to get out. It's yeah. actually way easier to stop it before it starts. So I really try to help people recognize the cycles coming. Mm -hmm. It's preventative. Right. Now, can you tell people what are some of the signs and symptoms? Because a, a lot of times I speak with people mm -hmm. and they had no clue until they actually mentally or physically crashed. And that's when it was the wake up call. But sometimes that's that's too late. Like you said, if you fall into that that vicious cycle of burnout, it's going to take a, a quite a while to recuperate, you know, and I think a lot of people, including myself, have gone through that. And it was not an easy, easy way to get back on track. You know, it took time, like quite a bit of time to get myself back to the where I was. So what yeah. signs should people really look for? Yeah, the, the physical signs are the most obvious. They're not always the first signs. The physical signs are you constantly get sick. It may, quote unquote, only be a cold. However, in my case, I talk about this a lot. My colds would turn into pneumonia, yeah. a cold bronchitis pneumonia, a cold bronchitis pneumonia. You would think I'd recognize the pattern after a while. Right. And it wasn't that I didn't recognize it. I just pushed through anyway. Yeah. So physical symptoms are your friend in terms of being a leading indicator that burnout is around the corner. Emotionally, you may feel like you're all over the place. You're not sure why you feel so high or so low, right. even feeling super excited and exhilarated, like, whoa, I don't know how to stop. I might hit a wall. If yeah. you feel like you might hit a wall, you are on the road to burnout. And then for those of you that are spiritual, I know I am, I will tell you that if you have a spiritual practice or anything in your well-being area that you think about as something you do for yourself and you give it up, and it's a day and a week, and now it's a month, and you have this epiphany that I have not pulled a tarot card or done meditation, or in my case, pet my dogs before I put my feet on the floor in the morning. That's my meditative yeah. practice. Maybe seconds. It's not like I count it or I 
have a stopwatch. Right. If you stop doing the things that fill you up spiritually, you are probably in a burnout cycle. Right. And that, that's so true, you know, and, and I've found myself doing that many times is that I will, I, I'm going to do it later. I'm going to do it later. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then all of a sudden later it becomes too late because then you're getting tired and you don't have the, 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 the clarity or the inner strength to like really do those little things that you normally do. You just want to either just go underneath the covers or lay on the couch or, you know, and you just, because you've had such a, a long constructive day, but then you're not giving yourself what you need. And then you're slowly draining yourself like a vacuum, but you, you know, in little bits. And then all of a sudden, you know, you find yourself, your body just slowly collapsing. And I've seen many people that consistently getting sick. And I noticed that when I was going through burnout, I noticed that, you know, I was having one ailment after another ailment after another ailment. And that's not normally me, you know? And it was like, and they say 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And when you're under stress, you're, you're just breaking down your, the, the immune walls in your body. And you're basically opening the doors to invite illness and, and, and different conditions into your life. And it's amazing, but that's what happens when, you know, it just breaks your, your in, inner body down. I love what you said about later is too late. I really would love your listeners to consider that for a moment. Later is too late. And that's why hindsight's 2020. So when you look back at the times that you were getting sick and it was a, a repetitive thing and you said, I'm not normally like that. It is so much easier to look back and say, oh, I was in a burnout cycle. So what yeah. I am working on, and it's challenging, is to tell people to flip their script yeah. and to look forward, be a futurist of your own life right? and really look forward. And if your calendar a month from now looks booked, 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 booked and busy, yeah, good for you. However, <laughs> you may realize that you're setting yourself up for a burnout cycle right. and perhaps there's something that doesn't have to be double booked. Yes. So true. <laughs> so true. It sounds easier than it is. This is a real shift, right? Yeah. It's a real shift. What would you say? Like, how would you start? You know, someone said, okay, this sounds great, but how do I get started? Like, what do I do? You know, because a lot of times people will listen to motivational speakers yeah. and it sounds great, but they yeah. just don't know how to break it down in simplistic steps. And what would be your way of, of breaking it down in simplistic steps to help people start to get into a productive lifestyle where yeah. they're not going to experience burnout and they can actually strengthen themselves so they could actually do more and feel better. That is why I wrote the book A through Z. D is for delegate without remorse. O is for outsourcing. All the ways to do it, to keep yourself out of a burnout cycle, yeah. not just excite you and inspire you to recognize burnout is real. We know burnout is real. 89% of women around the world report to be in some type of burnout. Yeah. And it's true for men as well. If, if you pull in men into the statistic, it goes down to the lower 60s. Yeah. Apparently men are not as burned out as women. And I'm sure that's another topic for another show. Yeah. So <laughs> well, I'd I would love to really... talk about that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So would I, I'm married second and final. I would encourage people to really attempt to try the tips, tools, tricks, and traps to avoid advice in this book. It yeah. is very, very simply written. It is highly effective. I've proven yeah. over the last 30 years, I've hired, trained, mentored, developed thousands of people. And so it's really effective ways to do the things we're talking about. Of course, it's up to you. You have to actually do the steps right. and adjust accordingly. So right. I, I really love this book, book. And I don't, I didn't say that about my first book. I did not feel as proud or passionate about my first book. Yeah. I really love this book because it's my life story. It's my client's life stories. And it's synthesized into very simple ABCs and one, two, threes. Try it. Yeah, that sounds great. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it really does. Because I think it's, you know, burnout is one topic that you'll hear so many people talk about. So many people are interested in because it affects everybody. And I can really say the word everybody, because mm -hmm. at some point in your life, you do get burned out. And some people get more burned out than others, because some people can handle stress better too. You know, we're all different personalities, and we're all different types of people. So it's very hard, you know, and then I realized that as I got older, you know, what I was able to do a good friend of mine couldn't handle that. And I'm like, well, why can't you do X, Y, and Z? You know, it's like, I don't understand. Well, we're two different people. Finally, after years, I realized that not everybody is meant to do the same things. And we're all different types of people. But, you know, it, it's so easy to burn ourselves out. No matter what type of, of person you are and what characteristics you hold, we tend to, a lot of times, we, we get to that point and and we don't we keep we step over the line it's so easy yeah. to step over the uh. line you know and 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 it, it's done you know it, it's done so all the time by by many people and and once you step over the line then it's it's very hard to cross back to that normality that we call mm -hmm. normal you know and it's it's trying to save ourselves from getting to cross over that line you know yeah. when when you uh, experience burnout what were some of the signs that you felt and and did you notice that you were trying getting into burnout right away or was this something that it was just very subtle and then all of a sudden one day boom yeah that's a great question in my 30s it was boom in my 40s i i knew it and i ignored it mm -hmm. which is really interesting I went, that's okay. I'm all that. I'm superwoman. I'm supposed to be. I'm a Silicon <laughs> Valley CEO. That that's okay. Burnout is for those, you know, weak, you know what? So yeah, yeah, I don't I don't have time for burnout. I'm I'm past that. So, you know, that might be other people because comparison's the thief of joy, basically. Yeah. What you were just saying. So, you know, and I was comparing myself to these power women that I believed I was supposed to be like, and I'm nothing like them. It yeah. doesn't make them wrong and me right. We're just not the same to your point. Yeah. Like Cheryl Sandberg and me, not the same women. That's okay. Yeah. I, I don't know why I was trying to be here. I suppose that was the muse that was put in front of me. In my 50s, I'm 56 now, mm -hmm. I do recognize it. And I would give myself an A minus for stopping it before it starts. And it's been hard earned to get to this point. Yeah. It really is. It's really about being honest with yourself. And when your loved ones, the people that really have your back say to you, you're over-functioning. That's a Brene Brown term. Yeah. <laughs> and my husband, I should never have watched her Netflix special with him. <laughs> you're over-functioning. And he's right. And and if he says anything else, he's in deep trouble. <laughs> it's okay for him to say you're over-functioning. And now we kind of, you know, we laugh about it because it's right. true. If I start over-functioning, burnout's around the corner. Right. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, I love how you, you mentioned that, you know, now you're aware of the signs, you know, yeah. and that, and one of the things I, I loved what you said is that your one problem was that you were comparing yourself to others. And I, you know, I found myself doing that. You know, you, you put yourself on, you see someone else that's really successful. And if you are a go-getter, you're like, I want to be at that level one day, but you know, you have to realize, and it was a mentor of mine that said, you know, I'm at level 33, you're just starting out. You can't compare yourself to others because you're not at that level yet, you know, and you have to really just compare yourself to yourself, you know, yeah. and make standardized goals to get there mm -hmm. to where you want to be. And, you know, I think that was key because I think a lot of people in our society, we tend to compare ourselves to others and we get frustrated when we don't do the same as those people and, or we get angry or people get envious and, mm -hmm. you know, or a lot of negative emotions come out is because you can't compare yourself to others. It's just a big no, no, and mm -hmm. it works against you. It, it really does. What do you think? I, I think I wish you would have talked to me in my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I thought like this in my thirties. <laughs> Yeah, no one ever said it to me. I mean, I really found out the hard way. I was sick quite often and I dealt with a lot. I was a single mom for 11 years. 
I really was on this fast track corporate career. I traveled internationally for work. I was really on this endless sprint inside of a marathon yeah. and looking back, of course, that's not sustainable. Right. So if you are sprinting through life as if there's no time to rest, it will catch up with you. Right. It does catch up with you. And, you know, with age comes wisdom, I guess. Right. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do feel as I'm getting older, I am learning more and realizing more. And then I would say to myself, like everybody else does, I wish I knew this in my 20s and 30s. You know, I wish it, it, I didn't have to find out now, but I guess there's a reason for everything. And, you know, yeah. and burnout is serious. I don't think people yeah. realize how serious it is. And I see so many people going into the stages of burnout or they're already in burnout. And it's very hard to talk to someone and try mm -hmm. to get them on the right path sometimes when they are in burnout, because they are either they're not reaching their goals or even I see it a lot in business. I see it when I coach business people that mm -hmm. they're especially the way the economy was it's been like like a roller coaster ride. They're not making what they used to be making or they're not doing as well or it's just more stressful in their industry and they're they're trying to figure out the solution and they just find themselves getting so burnt out and you can't succeed when you burn out you you just can't succeed and you can't you know sometimes you do need that outsider to say hey look what's happening you know but it, i find that a lot a lot of times people don't want to hear the truth or they're in denial. And I don't know, do you see that a lot in people? A lot, a lot. And, and honestly, people don't like to work with me if they don't want a very direct, radically candid challenge in their face. I do yeah. it lovingly. I care deeply about people. Right. Mm -hmm. I really don't sugarcoat because the fastest way through is through. Yeah. And so I do try to accelerate people so that they can have their own transformation by truth telling. Yeah. I also am very clear about working harder has nothing to do with being smarter. And yeah. I know we've all heard that for the last, you know, 50 years Back to your question earlier about the how, that's the problem I really believe is that no one's truly breaking down the micro steps of how to work smarter, not harder. And so yeah. most people know about SMART goals. I mean, my kids learned it in high school, which was cool. Yeah. And they taught SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based. The challenge is they didn't teach smarter. And so the E in smarter is for evaluate. Right. And, and in Silicon Valley, everything's an experiment. So I learned a lot from tech and I sit on a, a couple of boards that are doing disruptive technology things yeah. for humanity. And there's really a lot to be said for experimenting and rapid testing and failing and getting back up and adjusting, being agile. So that's the E. And then the R is rinse and repeat. If it worked, the experiment worked. If it didn't, then you have to start over. Right. Really just start again at S because you might have had the wrong goal. You might have had the wrong measure. You might have set yourself up for failure. It might not have been realistic. Yeah. You thought it was. Right. And it wasn't. Yeah. And that's okay. So if you're going to work smarter, not harder, you actually really want to design for that. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think you really have to create a design for it and really have to plan it out. And, you know, I'm a very, very big on goal setting and creating plans and strategies. And I, I think you, you know, for me, I like to visually see things in front of me organized. And I think it's very hard to try to put everything in that brain of yours and try to, you know, organize it. And many people try to do that, but it doesn't work. You know, it's like, but if you can sit down and you can create your own strategy and your own plan and maybe put some goals, constructive goals, and then if you don't reach those goals, I say, don't beat yourself up because I see a lot of people beating themselves up when they don't reach the area they want to reach and at that specific amount of time. But, you know, I've come to a point where if it's not meant to be, it's not going to happen. If it's meant to be, it will happen. And, and that's yeah. what I keep 
draining into my head. And I think that helps me is that, you know, how do you feel about like, you know, are there certain things that you say to yourself that kind of helps you so that stress level doesn't rise and it, it plateaus or even lessens? Yeah, for sure. I am a huge believer in surrender. It's hard to do. I do believe in it. And I am in an experiment phase myself. If something comes to me and it's really, really tough, the only way through is through. I, I go through it. It may yeah. be painful. It may be upsetting. It may be hurtful. Maybe a really important lesson that on this lifetime journey of mine, I need to get. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with it. And it's very much like being in the ocean. So if you are someone who loves the water, you know that the tides ebb and flow. Right. And if you fight the current, you will always lose the battle. Mother nature will always win. And so if you go with it and not against it, you are so much better off. And most likely, I tell myself, I tell my clients all the time, even if something falls in your lap, that you don't understand, you don't believe you like it. And in fact, you feel like digging your heels in and saying no. Yeah. No makes room for yes when it's warranted. Sometimes it's let me see what this is actually about mm -hmm. before I get so judgmental about yeah. myself and others. Right. And so try to roll with it at least for a cycle and find out why is this coming to me now? Stay yeah. with it. Let it simmer. Don't overreact. Take a step back be objective. It's really important. It doesn't mean it's forever. It's just right. for now. I think that's so true. I, and it's okay to say no too. You know, I yeah. think a lot of times that that word no is hard for people, but it's okay. It, it doesn't yeah. make you a bad person. Yeah. It's okay to say no, you know, and yeah. I, I, I see so many people pleasers and they end up burning themselves out because they, they try do. to please everyone, but that gets you nowhere. And I yeah. think a lot of times I see people taking advantage of those type of people and it's yeah. sad and they get yeah. burnt out and, you know, their intentions were good, but it did nothing but harm them. Yeah. It, it's interesting because the most successful people in the world, different definitions of success. I'm not talking about money and power because that's mm -hmm. not my definition of success. Those are, things are fine. Yeah. Real success. Like I do what I love and I love what I do. I have yeah. time for myself and others that I want to spend time with. I give back because that's important to me. However you define success outside of power and money. Right. The most successful people say no 10 times to everyone. Yes. So they yeah. are saying no a lot to the things that don't bring them joy or don't bring joy to others. Right. They are saying yes to things that are confusing or maybe seemingly too hard because they are in alignment with their core values. So if you right. know your true north, you know what makes you unique, you know what your deal breakers are. Those are so vital. I really encourage people to learn more about themselves. We're so curious about each other. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's interesting. So true. It really is because so many people are so, so interested in what everybody around them is doing and what's going on with them that they tend to avoid themselves. And I always yeah. think that's a way so we don't have to look at our flaws. You know, yeah. it's very easy to look at others and be jump, judgmental towards others and try to figure others out. But that's a great way to also not focus on yourself and not yeah. focus on the things that need to be addressed also. Yeah. I, I always say avoidance is not a strategy. And it's funny. I was with a client yesterday and she said, you know, whatever you avoid, you give all the power to. Yeah. I thought that was so brilliant. I've never heard anyone say no, it like that. I haven't, but I love that. I love that. I sent it to a bunch of people right after she said it, like a mass text to a bunch of people I know and love. Because if you're an avoider, you've just given all your power away. I, that is so eye-opening. Yeah. And it is very eye-opening because so many times people, they focus on others and they don't, they, they don't, they avoid themselves and you're focusing on meaningless little things. You're putting all your energy into things that don't matter. It doesn't matter why Susie wore the red shirt and she didn't wear the one that you bought her for Christmas. You know, it's <laughs> like, it, it doesn't matter. You know, why is she answer your phone call? You know, all these little silly things, you know, you're, you're, you're taking all your positive energy and you're just like giving it away and just throwing it somewhere else when it could be used for some, 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 something so much more important. 
One thing I noticed about burnout, though, I see it a lot, is that have you noticed that a lot of people don't know when to stop? They bring their 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 work home with them. They bring their they don't know how to let go of the problems, even temporarily, you know, because if we dwell on on the problems, they're not going to go away. It's just going to make you more stressed out, you know, so it's, you know, by focusing and by worrying on certain situations, you're not making it better. It's not yeah. going to go away. You're just stressing yourself out. And then we talk about the illness and the sicknesses and, and breaking yourself down. And in, and I see that with, you know, at home and in, in personal lives. And you see that in at work. It's like, how do you hang up the coat? Like, how do you know yeah. that just when to let go? How do you yeah. do that? Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of rules to live by, and I know we don't like rules as human beings. However, we need a few. So rule number one on reducing burnout and increasing your joy is to not sleep next to your phone. If yeah. you are a physician who's on call, maybe if you are a mom and your kid is out until 2 AM and you cannot stay up and wait for them. And that's important to you. Okay, keep that phone till they're home safe. In general, do not sleep next to your phone. There are physical, mental, emotional reasons not to sleep with your phone. And right. oh, by the way, if you need an alarm to get up and your phone is in the bathroom, even behind a closed door, and you turn that ringer all the way up, even though the phone's on vibrate, <laughs> you will hear the alarm. Trust me, you I've been will. doing this for about a decade. So mm -hmm. don't sleep next to your phone. If you are really keen on having a family meal of some sort, even if you're eating alone, right? Put the phone away. We, how many of us eat for an hour or an hour and a half? Who's having a six course meal, right? Stacey and I are coming to your dinner. Invite us because having a six, <laughs> six course meal. I don't exactly. even know what to cook. So just put the phone away for 20, 30 minutes and focus on yourself and others. If you're with others eating a meal, especially one meal a day, lunch or dinner, most likely not breakfast. Maybe it's breakfast. Yeah. One meal a day, micro habit building, reduce burnout, increase joy, put the phone away. So that's my second rule that I really prescribe yeah. as much as possible. The third thing is to really consider the fact that if you feel like you are running that race and you can't turn off and you're on adrenaline and now you're on fumes and you can even sense the difference in adrenaline and fumes. Yeah. Fumes is the bottom. Adrenaline is the high. If you're, yeah. if you're coming down off that high right. into the fume area and you feel anything related to fumes, I urge you to try a micro habit, one micro step, breathe the air, get in water, throw ice cubes in your bathtub, yeah. break your state, pet your dog, tell someone you love them, do something to break the state because yeah. otherwise the fumes are the danger zone. As much as right. the adrenaline can feel really scary and like you're wild, yeah. the fumes are very dangerous, especially for burned out providers yes like like moms mm -hmm. oh, very oh, dangerous definitely. yeah we don't want you in that low area i think that's so true mm -hmm. now if you had to take what we've talked about today what would you like to emphasize in and make people really understand to our listeners what's important you know about understanding burnout and maybe about you know just going over what we've talked about some important factors that you really think people need to really remember and understand thank you the world is burned out and in particular if you're not giving to yourself and you're giving to everyone else you are either currently in a state of burnout you have recently been in a state of burnout and most likely will be in a state of burnout again. And burnout is the thief of joy. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and I, I've noticed so many people, they, they've they accomplished so much, but they, they're burnt out and they don't look like they're enjoying life. They look like they're just dragging their feet and they are just worrying about X, Y, and Z and they can't focus and they can't enjoy life. And if we can't enjoy life, then what's the point of being here? Because the whole purpose is there's so many things in life we should have gratitude for, I feel, you know, and, and a lot of times we get so caught up in, in the world and, and the things that we feel we need to do and, and we need to accomplish. But honestly, 
it should be all about happiness. It should be about what to do to make yourself feel happy as a person. And, and, you know, if you are a high achiever and you do want to accomplish your goals and you feel that you need to be a good mom or whatever the case may be, you know, you could do it, but in, in a healthy way. And I think that's all about what your book is about, right? Can you tell us a little about that book? Yeah. So taking you from overdrive to thrive, you will actually be more productive when you give to yourself in little bits, micro steps, every single day, you would be really surprised how much more productive you'll be. Busy does not equal productive. Right. And so the book gives a ton of advice and tips and tricks and traps to avoid and tools as to how to increase your joy, productivity, and value. Yeah. And V is for value, the value we give. We're all pretty clear. We're giving, we're giving, we're giving. We do, we do, we do. Yeah. We aren't that clear on what do we expect in exchange? What do we get in return? And I'm not talking about a paycheck. That's yeah. the bare minimum. I'm talking about the things that you love, the culture that's important to you, the friendships that you'll be able to make time for because you have flexibility. Whatever it is that's important to you that you really want for yourself, yeah. If you're giving and giving and achieving and achieving, it's also important to realize prescriptively what it is that you expect in exchange. Right. Because it is an exchange. It is. Time for value. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very true. That is so true. Now, where can people find your book? Amazon.com and pretty much anywhere that you buy your books. We're doing a lot with BookBub and Goodreads right now. The book okay. just came out. So thank you for asking. And on my website, Dana Mahina, M-A-H-I-N-A.com. I love it. And what are, are some of the services that you have? Because I know you have the book and yeah. you, know, you talk about burnout, but what are some of the services that you offer to people? Yeah. So I do a lot of group coaching for women. We have a group called Bloom. We launched it last year and I am so happy with the work and the passion that's come from this group. Every time I coach women about burnout and joy and how to make trade-offs, how to say no and what to say yes to, mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm smiling the entire time. It's like being on your show. It's like talking to a friend that you never knew you you had just sitting right there. It's amazing. Yeah. So women's group coaching, there's a lot of things happening with my podcast and the book. And I have gone back out on the speaker circuit, which I hadn't done in so many years pre pandemic. <laughs> and so I am out speaking about the book to groups as well of both men and women. Oh, that's awesome. Because it really applies, you know, what your book talks about really can apply to both men and women, you know, and, uh, you know, and men can be bitches too. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> Amen. my husband said, what I've been with you 10 years, married seven. When are you writing the guy's guide? Yeah. Right. It's actually a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> just take this book, hand it to your partners, husbands, sons, and say, do these things to help your women not burn out. Right. And then all the don'ts don't do those things either. <laughs> <laughs> do's and don'ts. They're all there. They're very it, clearly written. It's so true. It's <laughs> so true. Oh my God. This has been amazing. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share before we go that you, you know, do you have anything you'd like to tell the audience or you can think about anything? I would really just say thank you to you and to your listeners. I appreciate everyone's time, effort, and energy toward changing and shifting the ways that you live your life. Because Stacy said it earlier, this is it, at least right now, D depending on your belief system, this is it right now. And so if you're present and you're in the moment, just realize we have 168 hours in every single week. It's actually way more time than most of us realize. Yeah. How do you want to spend it? How much right. of it do you want to keep yourself stuck in the burnout trap versus allowing yourself some micro joy? 
Exactly. A hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent with you. This has been amazing, Dana. I, I loved having you on the show. I hope you come back and we could talk some more. This has been amazing. And there's so many things we could talk about that really pertain to you know, healthy living and burnout and really the way we look at life and, and breaking those bad habits and, and really recreating those good habits. Because, you know, if we can just like break those bad habits and learn how to really, you know, focus on the better way of living, we could avoid burnout and really bring some joy into our lives and not have to go through life feeling like we're dragging our feet or feel like we're stuck, but maybe hopping through a field of uh, lavender, you know, and, and just, you know, well, are you, you're the hibiscus and everything else, but over here, we got the lavender going on, but I wouldn't mind running through a field of hibiscuses, you know? <laughs> Come on over. There's a field of yellow right behind the house. Come on. I told you, I, I might be, you I might be taking that. I, I might definitely might be taking that invitation. Well, thank you so much, Dana. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. Have a great day.